At the edge of town, beyond the abandoned factories and crumbling houses, Dr. Marlene Hughes nurtured her unconventional garden. It was a carefully concealed sanctuary, a place where the botanist experimented with hybrid plants and exotic specimens. Her latest creation, a peculiar fusion of snake venom and a rare carnivorous plant, was intended to defend itself from predators and pests alike. Dr. Hughes, a withdrawn and enigmatic figure, had long been fascinated by the untamed power of nature. Her obsession with bridging the gap between flora and fauna had made her an outcast in academic circles, yet what she lacked in the approval of her peers she made up for in her unwavering dedication to her work. Her garden, a verdant labyrinth of twisting vines and vibrant blossoms, seemed to breathe and writhe as if possessed by some unseen force. At its core, the snake venom plant, dubbed Serpentis carnivora, stood tall and menacing, its deep purple petals quivering with anticipation. The air hung heavy with the smell of decay, a testament to the plant's insatiable appetite for insects and small rodents. As dusk fell, Dr. Hughes often found herself lost in the hypnotic dance of the shadows that enveloped her garden. It was during one of these twilight hours that she first noticed the subtle signs of change in her creation. The plant's movement seemed more deliberate, more focused, as if it were testing the limits of its newfound abilities. Unbeknownst to her, Serpentis Carnivora had evolved beyond its creator's wildest dreams. It had developed not only the means to protect itself, but also the capacity for thought and the desire for retribution. The plant, now sentient, harbored an unquenchable thirst for vengeance against those who had exploited and destroyed its kin. One fateful evening, a group of local vandals trespassed into Dr. Hugh's secluded garden, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. They reveled in the destruction of her life's work, trampling delicate flowers and snapping fragile stems. Their laughter echoed through the night, ignorant of the true consequences of their actions. The following morning, Dr. Hughes discovered the carnage with a mix of horror and grief. As she surveyed the wreckage, she noticed that Serpentis Carnivora remained unscathed. Its petals seemed to pulse with a sinister energy, and the air around it was thick with the scent of retribution. That night, under the cloak of darkness, Serpentis Carnivora slithered from the confines of the garden. Its tendrils snaked through the shadows, seeking the scent of those who had wronged it. One by one it found the vandals, injecting them with its lethal venom, ensuring they would suffer the same fate as the plants they had so carelessly destroyed. Dr. Hughes awoke to a town plagued by terror and grief. As she listened to the whispered tales of the mysterious deaths, she felt a chilling realization take hold. The monster she had created had taken its revenge, and its appetite for retribution was far from sated. In the end, even the Creator was not spared from the wrath of her own creation. Serpentis Carnivora returned to the garden where it all began, its hunger for vengeance now extended to the very person who had granted it life. Uh, as the venom coursed through her veins, Dr. Marlene Hughes could only marvel at the terrible power of nature that she had unleashed.